Welcome back, me wackies and rare lovers of humor. <laughs> and you are rare in these days <laughs> of pucker-lipped hearts. So without further ado, let's let me share with you today some of the most poetic and <laughs> creative writing that has ever been compacted into a single little book, Finnegan's Wake. This chapter is uh, the chapter on Shem, the sun, the sun, the twin of Sean. Shem is the introverted genius, the poet, mama's boy. Um, Sean is uh, the thief, the political satirist. He's a, the, a successful uh, businessman, extrovert. Their father is uh, both in one. The, the story in Finnegan's Wake, the the mother, the father, the daughter, the sons, the, the town. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's brilliant. It's the hardest book in the world. But once you grow up to it, <laughs> through your appreciation of diverse poetry and literature, which is <laughs> everything before 1938 has been digested in this book, anything written, that was significant, you can bet, in, in basically any language too, since Joyce spoke, how many languages? Like 15 or something like that? It's like some ridiculous amount he, he, he knew. He was a, a master of, uh, what do they call it? The, the science of language. And he was also a, a singer and a bard. And so Joyce, Joyce was the, the greatest, and it's all here in Finnegan's Wake. It's all here. And the great thing about this book is it's circular, so it really doesn't matter where you start. You could start here. This could be the first thing you've uh, listened to on Finnegan's Wake. Chances are, I mean, that's what it takes, too. You're not going to just approach it by yourself and go and read it. Guaranteed. You're not. You'll bounce off. It's a very strong wake. If you try to throw yourself at it, it will thrust you away. That's what it will do. Because it, 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 the, what it kind of demands of the, the reader is it sort of demands that you know everything already. And, uh, and so it's a very Talmudic book in that way. It's pure sublime genius it's actually the the greatest you, you, well you've heard my talks on it i've given a lot of talks or you can go to my playlist finnegan's wake where i share some of my talks and some other people's talks on it too because it's it's a fascinating book i haven't read the whole book no 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 i'm trying to understand it because otherwise just to to read it and let it wash over your head is Many regards pointless. I think it's pointless. And you should bounce off. You've got to use your intuition and tell you what your gut tells you. Your gut's going to tell you that it's like, this is, this is nonsense and gibberish. Well, I mean, get away from it. That's, that's what you have to do. It's a book that you're going to have to leave and come back to and leave and come back to and leave. I didn't start appreciating it until after I had listened to some videos on it, uh, namely Terence McKenna. Once, you know, I first read it, I thought it was all gibberish and, and a waste of time because I had appreciated Ulysses quite a bit. So I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll read Finnegan's Wake. No, it's not that kind of a book. See, so even Ulysses, I, I'm coming to realize more and more. It's like I, I missed most of it in reading it by myself and, and not engaging other people in, in it. That... That's what you need for these books. But Finnegan's Wake, absolutely, you need that. I'm going to share with you uh, 
just the most beautiful paragraph or two within the the chapter on Shem. By the way, it's a circular book and it's also um, this, he, he's created his own style of painting with the logos. He paints with words. And so in this chapter and in this section, I mean, you, you'll, you'll see many references to many different things, uh, historical and biblical and psychological, as well as within the story of the wake and even um, references to paints and, and pastiche and painting things in, in, in a very similar way. So there's Dante, there's a descent into hell in this. And it fits kind of, especially in this, you'll, you'll, you'll see the references to the, the descent into hell. So, uh, so, of course, a lot of the symbology that goes along with it, with the, you know, he, he, he uses and reiterates from all different cultures, Hindu and Egyptian and, and Christian and Muslim and uh, Irish pagan and um, Judaism. He, he's, he incorporates so much of the symbolism and also both the, the Jesuits and the Orthodox and then the, the Protestants. Uh, he, like, so much comes uh, into full focus uh, through the Finnegan's Wake. That's why it's a mystery. It's a mystery book. It's not easy. Every sentence, every paragraph, it's, it's going to leave you with a huge question mark. If that kind of thing makes it's is your nightmare and makes you feel v like way too uncomfortable, this is the kind of book that that well you'll need to read other writers first. That's why it challenges you to be pro proficient with almost a, basically everybody else because he, he's read everybody, all the historical writings and more. So, and even the, the, the very essence of Finnegan's Wake, the, from what I hear, is the whole architecture of the wake is based entirely, which is an interesting <laughs> emphasis, on the uh, medieval book of alchemy called La Zenzia Nuova by Gambatista Vico. So... I haven't read that. I'm sure it would help too, but all books help. Re even reading all, knowing history and diverse histories is going to really help you with the book, but also knowing like every detail, anything you know from uh, he um, hemming and, and the, the art of basket weaving and, and cloth making and, and uh, the, the, ma the making of clothes and styles of clothes and down to costumes and, and, you know, wearing particular regalia and what the regalia are called uh, on the costumes and pins and, and different little um, tweaks in the, in, in the hem and, the, and the, the collar and things like that. He, he knows all of the names of these. He knows medicine. The, the man was a polymathic genius. So... It's a very, very difficult book. So I think uh, I might just break this talk here and then, um, and then go ahead and then start reading it, uh, publishing what I'm gonna read here in the next video. Um, just because it's already a little long, it's about a 10 minute talk already, which is a bit long for people who, who just wanted to hear, listen to some Finnegan's Wake Well, I'm telling you, I'm trying to prep you. That's why I'm prepping you to like realize that you have to get in the right frame of mind. It isn't an easy book and isn't, isn't something that's going to be delivered to you through perfect, uh, <laughs> perfect punctuation and perfect sentence structure and perfect grammar. Like all of those things you can throw up to the wind. He's literally painting with language. It's what he's doing, but no one, no one could ever do that. Like, like Joyce was able to do it. I, I dare say he'll, he'll never be taught in, in history. He came at a 
a real high point in cultural history if we seem if we if we think about that and uh, as a side note i wonder where terence mckenna puts finnegan's wake 1938 or 39 whenever it was published where he puts finnegan's wake on his uh time wave continuum graph in my opinion uh <laughs> mckenna's most harebrained and uh just idiotic of ideas. I think that that's where McKenna was just, he was just out of his gourd. <laughs> but McKenna too was a, a great genius and a great, uh, uh, like his great benefit, I think, obviously it's in, in plants and the, the bringing to the forefront the, the importance and need for the preservation of shamanic wisdom uh, within of the plants, shamanic plant wisdom for the rest of the world. We need to preserve that through also, you know, in many ways, both through his botanical dimensions in Hawaii that he set up, the foundation he set up, and then also through uh, uh, another, uh, through actually preserving the indigenous regions of the Amazon and South America from exploitation, from the, the, the forces of mining and drilling and, and, and deforestation. We have to leave these places alone. It's so important. And as you know, that's at the forefront. It's been at the forefront of, of modern history for a long time. I think it, it's, it's post-Joyce, too. Joyce might not have realized the import. Of course, he, he was knew about the, 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 the rabid history going back 200 plus years of rubber collectors and rubber barons throughout the world. And that was the real term, rubber baron. Robber baron was a, a de deformation of the, of the term for, you know, by the media to, to try to forget about rubber barons. You know, the, the, the jungle is sort of like the, what we're doing and what people do to exploit the jungle, even where it is protected, companies go in and infringe upon that and send in people to, to kill tribal leaders and stuff like that who are trying to stand up to these huge companies. It's, it's a massive epidemic going on in many countries throughout the Amazon. And so the, bringing that to the awareness of the forefront is a huge, one of the, the biggest, greatest things, I think, of the McKenna legacy. But included in that is his, uh, he was a, a Joyce scholar, specifically Finnegan's Wake. So that's why I, I point to his talk too. It might do you well. I mean, obviously, he's a better talker than me. I'm, I'm nobody, right? Like, who likes my voice? Like, really? McKenna, though. McKenna had the voice. You could, I could listen to him for hours and hours. McKenna was just so fascinating and funny. His humor never failed to delight me. In every talk, I'd be in stitches at some point by his uh, wit and wry subtlety of storytelling. Man was brilliant. And so I, I point to it. It will do you better to listen to McKenna's talks before mine. Mine are probably a little bit more for the person, for the people who have already listened to McKenna, but are still stumbling to appreciate the wake because that's what it takes. First, we have to appreciate other people appreciating the wake and listen to them and say, really? <laughs> you can appreciate it? Like, tell me about it. Like, I thought it was, like, nonsense and totally ineffable. And the, the tr truth is actually contrary. It, it, as McKenna points out, it, it's a very hard book, but it rewards the effort. You have to go at it, as he says, you have to go at it with, like, uh, an archaeologist with nut pick and toothbrush to uncover layer after layer after layer. That was the sort of way McKenna spoke. He had this California stoner drawl that I like and many people liked and still do. McKenna, though dead, was great. So this is a book that takes, it's, it's, it's an endless introduction. That's what it's going to take. You don't finish it. People say, look, I've finished it. It's like, well, great. What are you saying about it? 
like that, then you've missed it. You, you, you tried to force yourself through it so you could say you finished it. And there's a few people who stand up and say, oh, but I did it. I finished it. And no, you didn't. It's not the book that you, any, you can, I mean, you can think you did, but you're, you're deluded. What? You think you've, you've digested it all and you, 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 you grasp it. First of all, then what's it about? I mean, obviously there's the family, there's the divine family, there's the resurrection underneath the whole thing. It's a, it's a, it's a book. It's a really, it's a Christian monument. The, the, the Finnegan, the story of Finnegan is a, a story of a Christian, of a, of a resurrection, of a hero, of a cultural hero, of an ancestor. It's, a, it's just... And so that allegory runs through there. The allegory is the father, is Finnegan. He's, he's, the, he's the giant. He represents all of the, uh, basically the, the past pantheon of gods that, that history has bequathed us. So it's a monumental book. It's absolutely unassailable and, and incomprehensible. And, and the best we're going to do is to start to appreciate its uh, poetic buoyancy and ease and pithy significance because it's the most pithy of poetic prose what can i say i'm i'm a dwarf i'm a dwarf we're all dwarves trying to come to the wake and so it's beyond shakespeare i mean shakespeare has been you know surpassed, far surpassed with, with the whole story. There are all of these stories, kings and queens and, and treachery and, and princes and brothers and treachery of the brothers. And the, the, it's like every, every possible archetypical um, historical scenario exists within this book. And it's also a, a circular book and it, it's, it's also a fractal. So I'm going to share with you, though, a very, uh, it's a difficult, it's a very difficult uh, passage, but I think when I read it for you, the way I read it will help to <laughs> clarify the type of uh, uh, lightness that Joyce is taking with language and the liberties that he's taking with language. just to read it yourself at any pace and let it roll over your head i mean you can it just can be absolute gibberish and then you can't you can't say you read it because it's not that kind of a book like i'm saying i haven't read probably like 95% of the book it's a very difficult book but the little bits i've started to pick into with nut pick and toothbrush and and makes it, and of course, I've had a go at it in certain chapters and passages. I've gotten further. I've I've made an effort to to dig into the book, and it helps if you cheat and jump around and then learn about what other people say about it. That's a little bit of preparation, and it's, you can call it cheating, but you can also jump around and cheat and use your intuition and say, "Hey, you know, I feel like this right in the middle of this chat this." paragraph it should go here and you skip ahead just like oh that's what i feel intuitively you you might be right in some respects because it's a, a circular kind of book uh, i hope this introduction um, for those of you who've been patient enough to go through it has been valuable for many of you because this is going to be a fun little 10 or 15 minute read. It's a difficult read, but I'm only going to go a couple, three or four paragraphs. It's very, like I said, I don't know. I don't know. Like I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, it's a very hard book to, to read for you. It takes a lot of soul and character 
and 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 depth uh even to to miss it even to read it and and obviously we're going to miss 80 percent of the significance like that's what i'm trying to point out but i hope that i'm able to at least shine some light upon it through my diverse experience and my diverse reading that i've done i'm not a language scholar i don't know any other language except english that's a detriment but uh, I mean, well, it's it's hard to say. This whole this whole chapter, I have so many parts highlighted and underlined, but not not for like, oh, look, I'm going to reread this. It's like I'm trying to I'm trying to understand it and, and circle things that I want to come back to and try to understand more and underline things that that just seem especially prolifically poetic and amusing. Like his play on words, like, like uselessly unreadable, he writes, because he's the author of Ulysses, he writes uselessly unreadable. So there's the entendre. Sewerful of guinea gold wine, right? Sorrowful, sewerful, right? It makes sense. Probscenium, pantheomime, these words have been fiddled with. Shrugger's country. Boast aloud, alone to himself. Can you bait it? Volgariano did but study with stolen fruit. How cutely to copy all their various styles of his signature. So as one day to utter an epical forged check on the public for his own private profit until, as just related, the dustbins united scullier maid and house, house helps sorority better known as Sluttery's Malted Fut, turned him down and assisted nature by unitedly shooing the source of annoyance out of the place altogether and tay totally on the heat of the moment, holding one another's gonk for no one. Hound or scrub lady, not even the Turk, ungreekable in percent of the armenable, dared with the pole cat at close range. As where we were ungreekable in and making some point to pointing remarks as they done so at the perfect of the sniffy, your honor. A boon the why oh, why a stunk, mister. Okay, so that was just for an example. That wasn't the section I was going to read. It's a very difficult book. It's cumbersome and lofty, but where we find the lofty flights of poetic wit and wry cunning and craft of wordsmith <laughs> is just a, a few sentences later. It begins in this massive overflowing elegy. And remember, we're in the Book of Sons in the specifically Shem, the introverted son, who you should also know is a um, Shem is Joyce's alter ego. Let's just put it at that. Not Sean. Sean is Joyce's shadow. So he's. <laughs> We're going to use the Jungian terms like that, which, by the way, Jung and Joyce had no affinity for for another one another. Um, Joyce despised Carl Jung. He despised uh, psychoanalysis. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny, psychoanalysis and Carl Jung did not despise. Uh, 
Joyce or creativity in any way. Psychoanalysis was uh, embracing cre creativity. But there's so many interesting ways to approach it. So let's begin, shall we? And for those, the, the, those other people who have left already have no time for introductions, I'm telling you, it's like, well, that's why you're, you're, those are the type of people who, you know, they're never going to read Finnegan's Wake. They're never going to be able to appreciate it. It takes the time. It takes the effort of listening to what other people say about it, who are interested in it, at least. I've done that with basically anything, anybody I can, and either, even other people reading it. There are better and worse renditions of other people reading it. There's some really good ones, and I, I've put them in in my playlist too. There's one I read in my playlist, but then another was some Irish guy is reading it, and he does a brilliant job in reiterating the the wake. In a large part, it's a book that has to be read aloud, and it has to be read alone. Both. You have to do both. Right? And he, he, he's hinting at everything. Boast aloud alone to himself. Yet the bumper sprinkler used, used to boast. So this is like, they're basically um, weaving in. You never know is he, where, when they're weaving in hearsay. There's lots of hearsay in this, this book on Shem or the chapter on Shem. So much of hearsay gets played into the narrative randomly. So you just have to try and go with the, the flow and the feeling of the rhythm and try to understand, decode what the inflection is of, of what they're saying. And if it's a, if there's the derogatory inflection, you can bet it's the hearsay of, of the people, of the public, the Shem, the Sean supporting public who are in there denouncing Shem and, and bringing up cases on his lowliness and his unworthiness and and his backwardness and so forth. And that's, and, and so it's one of the most comic chapters. And I think it's also, for me, after I've studied the book, I realize that you, you can't start with the first chapter. Of course, start with the first paragraph. You got to start with that because that's an enigmatic well, I mean, start with the first five, five or, or, or ten paragraphs or something, you know. Start with, with, do start with the first chapter, but don't try to finish the first chapter. Just, you know, try to take what you can digest. You're never, ever, ever going to digest the first chapter and not in one sitting and not at the first go. Not at the first go ever. You're, you, you're doomed if you try. I swear to God, folks, it's not that kind of a book. You can't just... Throw yourself at it. If you're just so impatient and eager that you can't listen to anything anyone else says about it, it's like it's not your kind of book. You'll never appreciate it. But those of you who have stuck around, oh, thank you for sticking around. Please subscribe to my channel. I have great uh, stories and fun poems that I share. Just amazing stories, both true and historical, and also some uh, wonderful uh fantasies from notable historical uh, figures in the short story world. Basically, I've, I'm reading the best of the best. I think Jorge Borges is, was one of the best short story writers that history has ever known. And I've read everything he's written in short stories. I don't think he was as good a poet. Uh, I think he was a very nominal poet. But uh, as his short stories go... He was one of the very best ever. And, I mean, he beats all, all of the short stories of all of the, the great novelists. The great novelists could not, most of them could not really write short stories. That was their exercise. But Borges turned short story writing into a, a high art form. And I've taken I've, what I found to be his very, very best short story. And you can find it in my playlist. It's called Man on Pink Corner. It's probably, in my opinion, it's the best short story in the world. It's very, I mean, that's why I shared it. I haven't gotten even a single comment on sharing that. It's a strange thing. So I need people like you. If you like these talks, then please go and explore there too. 
Of course, my channel is about music and art and creative ideas. And so those are the themes. And as I found, Finnegan's Wake is a bottomless well of uh, creative ideas and a cornucopia of genius and inspiration at that. And so we'll take it from there. And I think I've given you enough of a foothold on where we're at in this chapter. So let's, I'm going to go back and begin with what I was reading there. It's going to make it a little longer. Maybe it's going to make it a, a 40 to 50 minute video, which is going to take me like hours to upload on this phone. I'm telling you, it's a pain. I really appreciate your likes. I need them. I'm doing this for free. If you see ads, I don't get money from your ads. YouTube just shows ads to everybody now, no matter what, even if you're monetized or not. So... Uh, I, I, this is free. I'm publishing my stuff for free for everybody. It's a labor of love. So your feedback is important, uh, but please subscribe and like. Um, and like I'm saying, cre creative, the, the rare creative people in the world is becoming rarer and rarer. Like I said at the beginning, the very rare people who even appreciate like poetry and creative writing. All right, so I think it starts in with a bit of a, a parody. That's, that's the thing, because it, what, what they're saying is, uh, did I lose it? I lost it, let's try to find it. Yeah. Yeah, so they, you know, it's like you just, just try to imagine he's weaving in the, a bunch of drunk Irish guys sitting in a pub uh, slandering someone, but doing so like creatively to try to make one another laugh with with the the wit. And so with that, that slander, the slander is going to at some point delve into a, a sort of a, you'll see like the allusion to hell and fire and brimstone and and there's a descent. It's definitely, he knows exactly what he's doing liter, literarily. So, and also there's a digestion of all other history and all other hi hero stories and hero myths. They've all gone into this. So don't just shrug this off as, as nonsense. It turns out that where you, it doesn't make sense, it's because we haven't gone deep enough and we haven't read enough. That's the thing. We haven't read enough to know and appreciate what he's talking about. So, I'm going to have to have gotten rid of most listeners through this introduction. And I'm doing that. I think I'm going to leave the introduction because I, I have to do that on purpose to keep people away from this beautiful, I can't just start reading such beautiful stuff. People will just ignore it. Everyone will, and no one will appreciate it. So at least in this way, maybe, you know, a small handful of you will be able to appreciate the, the uh, length I'm going to, to uh, elucidate and clarify some of this very difficult book for you, and then to read it here, which I'm going to start with right now yet but i'm gonna pin my pin my end first okay let's let's go up to here because after that it seems like the the narrative slips into a, a a mother narrative all right yet the bumber sprinkler used to boast aloud alone to himself with the hack scent on it when min fighter was a boar constructor and hoy was a lexical student parole and corrected with the blackboard <coughs> trying to copy the stage Engelsman he brought to their house down on shouting bravure 
sur chole, letter perfect, colossal, luce, luce valeur, spache, how he had been towed out of all the Schicker families of the Klondikers from from Pew, Pew Pureish, Swab Sprays, the land of Nod, Shrugger's country, Pension Danubier home and Barbaropolis, who had settled and satisfied in the capital city after its hebdomadary metropolarchalization as sun-blistered, moon-plastered, gory, Weed, weedling, jovial, literous, and full, ordered off the gorgeous premises in most cases on account of his smell, which all cookmaids eminently objected to as resembling the bombinable puzzo that welled out of the pozo. Instead of chothering those mo instead of chothering those model Household's plain, wholesome pot hooks, as thing he never possessed of his Nigerian own. What do you think Volgariano did but study with stolen fruit? How cutely to copy all their various styles of signature, so as one day to utter an epical forged check on the public for his own private profit until, as just related, the dustbins united scullery maids and house help sorority, better known as Sluttery's mouthed foot, turned him down and assisted nature by united shooing, unitedly shooing the source of annoyance out of the place altogether and tay totally on the heat of the moment holding one another's gonk for no one hound or scublity, not even the Turk, ungreekable in person of the armenable, dared with the polecat at close range. And making some point-of-pointing remarks as they done, so as to the perfects of the sniffy, your honor, a boon, the lio, why a stunk, mister. Here's a parenthesis. Jimes wishes to hear from wearers of abandoned female costumes. Gratefully received. Wadmill jumper, rather full pair of collots and, and authored garmentaries to start city life together. His Jimes is out of job, <laughs> would sit and write. He has lately committed one of the then commandments, but she will now assist. Superior built, domestic, regular layer. Also got the boot. He appreciates it. Copies. Abortisement. Unparentheses. One cannot even begin to post figure out a stratesco ante as to how slow in reality the excommunicated drumcondriac Nate Hamas really was. Who can say how many pseudo-stylic shamiana, how few or how many of the most venerated public impostures, how very many piously forged palimpsests slipped in the first place by this morbid process from his plagiarist pen. Be that as it may, but for that light fantastic of his noses glow as it slid luciferously within an inch of its page, he would touch at it from time to time, the red eye of his fear and saddishness, to ensign the colors by the beerlets in his mathness and his educandies to out you to themselves in the cries of girl glee, gumber, inkware, chon chamber, sincero, zinzabar, tincture and gin. 
Nibs never would have quilled a serif to sheepskin. By that rosy lampoon's effluvious burning and with help of the simulchronic flush in his pan, a guinea a gurk he gets there. He scabbled and scratched and scrobbled and screvened nameless shamelessnesses about everybody ever he met, even sharing a precipitation under the idolish terrier's umbrella of a showerproof wall while all over up and down the four margins of his rancid, rancid shem stuff, the evil smeller, who was devoted to Udfader Sardanopolis, used to stipple endlessly in inartistic portraits of himself in the act of reciting old Nietzscheabeli's monologue in interior rear Hanno o Nonano Axel Brublumnas Ser Autore QED a heartbreakingly handsome young Paolo with love lyrics for the goy goyles in his aisles, a plaintiff's tanner voice, a ducal income of 132 drachmas per yard from Broken Hill Stranded Estate, Camel Breach Mannings, cutting a great dash in a brand new two guinea dress suit and a burled Hogsford hired for a Thursday evening, Mary Potty, and a lovely long pair of inky Italian moose starsleys, glistering with boric vase line and frangipani. Puh! How unwhisperably so! The house, O Shia, or O Shame, Quivapieno, known as the Haunted Ink Bottle, No Number, Brimstone Walk, Asia in Ireland, as it was infested with the raps, with his pen name, Shut, Seppi scraped on the door plate, and a blind of black sailcloth over its wan fwingshog, in which the sole contracted son of the secret cell groped through life at the expense of the taxpayers, dejected into day and night with Jesuit bark and bitter bite, calicohydrants of zulfur and scapulamina by full and forty quisicianos every day and everyone's way, more exceeding and violent abuse of self and others was the worst, it is hoped, even in our Western playboyish world, for pure mouse, farth, mouse farm filth. You brag of your brass castle of your... You brag of your brass castle of your tiled house in Bally, Vermont? Nigs, nigs, and nigs again. For this was a stinksome ink and stink, quite puzzinal to the rottle. Smatter of fact, angles aftonon, Browsing there, thought not a dam reeked more rare. My wood, the warped flooring of the, the lair, and sound conducting walls thereof, to say nothing of the uprights and imposts, were Persianly literatured with bursts, love letters, telltale stories, sticky back snaps, doubtful eggshells, bouchers, flints, borers, Puffers, amygdaloid almonds, rindless raisins, alphabetate formed verbiage, biblical viases, ompeter dictas, vices umbicae, ahems and ahas, ineffable tries at speech unassilabled, you omies, I old hymns, flu foul smut, fallen lucifers, Vestas which had served, showered ornaments, borrowed brogues, reversible jackets, black eye lenses, family jars, false hair shirts, godforsaken scapulars, never worn breeches, cutthroat ties, counterfeit franks, best intentions, 
curried notes, upset Latin tin tacks, unused mill and stumpling stones, twisted quills, painful digests, magnifying wine glasses, solid objects cast at, at goblins, once current puns, squashed quotatoes, sorry, quashed quotatoes, messes of mottage, unquestionable issue papers, seedy ejaculations, limerick dams, crocodile tears, spilt ink, blasphematory spits, stale chestnuts, schoolgirls, young ladies, milkmaids, washerwomen's, shopper keepers' wives, merry widows, ex-nuns, vice abbesses, pro-virgins, super whores, silent sisters, Charlie's aunts, grandmothers, mothers-in-laws, foster mothers, godmothers, garters, trees clippings from right, lift and syntrum, worms of snot, toothsome pickings, cans of Swiss condensed bilk, highbrow lotions, kisses from the antipodes, presents from pickpockets, borrow borrowed plumes, relaxable hand grips, princess promises, lees of wine, deoxidized carbons, convertible collars, Devilioker doffers, broken, broken wafers, unloosed shoe latchets, crooked straight waistcoats, fresh horrors from Hades, globules of mercury, undeleted gleet, glass eyes for an eye, gloss teeth for a tooth, war moans, special sighs. <laughs> Long sufferings of long standing. Oz, O's, We's, C's, Ya's, Yo's, Gia's, Nay's, Thaw's, So's, Yes's, and Yeezy's, and Yeezy's, to which of one has the stomach to add the breakages, upheavals, distortions, inversions of all this chamber made music one stands. Given a grain of goodwill, a fair chance of actually seeing the whirling dervish, tumult, son of thunder, self-exiled, in upon his ego, a night long, a shaking betwixt tween white or redder horrors, noonday terrorized skin and bone by an ineluctable phantom. May the shaper have mercury on him writing the mystery of himself in furniture. Of course, our low hero was a self valeer by choice of need, so up he got up whatever is meant by a Stourbridge clay kitchenette and Lither Gargalinu foul house for the sake of aches. The umple does not fall very fall from the dumper tree, which the poro mel melodious jigsmith, in defiance of the uncontrollable birth preservation game and poultry act, playing lallery lal rook, cookery nook, by the dodginess of his lantern, brooled and cocked and potched in an athenor. Whites and yokes and yokes and wotes to the fruling fredenance of Mas Blanca, Que la Blanca, Hermana, and Armaria, Muy bien, which with cinnamon and locusts and wild beeswax and licorice and carrageen moss and blaster of berries and ather mess and huster's mixture and yellowman's embrocation and pinking tones, patty, and stardust, and sinner's tear, a curedent to Sheridan's art of panning, chanting for all regale to the like of the legs he left behind with Liddy Fun, Letty Fan Levin, his cam traps, 
of fermented words, abracadabra, calubra, calorum, his aufs a la Madame Gabrielle de la Eglise, he avgs a ma mistress B. D. B. Meinfeld, his ayers a squelled mala a la pom de ciel, his we we ve ove and uve a la sulfate de sude his ocuri saute salmone a la monsignor his sufflosion of oogs with some cat on toyast a la mer puard his Pogodovis a la Fenella, his Fridegs a la Tricarem, in what was meant for a closet. Ah, oh, if only he had listened better to the four masters that infanted him, Father Matthew, Matthew and La Père Noble, and Pastor Lucas, and Padre Aguilar, not forgetting lay teacher Baldwin. Ah, oh, his costive Satan's antimonian manganese limo, limo litmius nature never needed such an alcove so. When robber and mumsel, the pulpic dictators on the nudgment of their legal advisers, Messrs. Codex and Podex, and under his own benefiction of their pastor, Father Flamius Falconer, boycotted him of all mutton suit candles and Romer ruled stationary for any purpose. He winged away on a wild goop's chase across the cathartic ocean and made synthetic ink and sensitive paper for his own end out of his wit's waste. You ask in Sam Hill, how? Let manner and matter of this, for these are spotting times, be cloaked up in the language of Blushfeld's porporates, that an Anglican ordinal, not reading his own rude Dunsky Tunga, may ever behold the brand of scarlet on the brow of her of Babylon, and feel not the pink one in his own damned cheek. Thank you for listening to Rhythm's Riddle. Once again, please subscribe and wax prolific with your comments.